I live in a 20-story apartment and my unit is on the 20th floor of the building. One unique feature of our apartment is the enormous lettering on each floor indicating the level you're on. I'm sure our senior residents very much love that. Anyway, it was on a Sunday and I had gone outside for a run. I was done with the workout after an hour and I had come back to my building for a quick shower before heading back out to go shopping for clothes. I took the elevator, pressed the button for the 20th floor, then waited patiently as the lift traveled upwards. Soon after, the lift stopped, doors opened, and I began to walk out into the hallway until I stopped. There was a problem, I was on the 25th floor. I couldn't have pressed the wrong button, not in this case because the building is only 20 stories high. To say that I was spooked would be the understatement of the decade. Seeing that number read 25 scared the living daylights out of me. I quickly got back inside the lift, pressed number 20 then hit the closed door button repeatedly like mad until the doors closed. I felt the lift going down and that eased my mind a little. That is, until the doors opened and I saw the big sign read 25 once again. I hit the door close button repeatedly until it closed again. Crazy enough, the lift took me back to the 25th floor once more. It didn't make any sense, not only there aren't floors beyond the 20th, but I actually felt the lift go down when I pressed the 20th floor button. I think it's the same with most people. You can tell the difference when the lift is going up and when it's going down. I felt that. I tried going to different floors and even pressed the emergency button, but nothing seemed to work as they were designed for. So eventually, I decided to get off the lift and take the stairs. I went down the stairs level by level until I reached the 20th. I opened the door that leads to the hallway, but right before taking the first step, I looked behind me just out of curiosity. Maybe I shouldn't have looked because the stairs leading to the upstairs level had disappeared. There was a door which leads to the rooftop of the building and that door is always locked. Things have gone back to the way they were. Even though I had come down the staircase only seconds ago, it was now blocked with the door that was always there. So essentially, the stairs leading to the not existing 25th floor was there while I was coming down on them, but they disappeared once I had come down from them. It was as though I was traveling from one reality to another, and the way to travel through them was the staircase that no longer exists. Crazy, I know. As a child, I used to get bored playing with the same toy quicker than most kids my age. I think that has something to do with my father buying me so many toys when I was young. He tells me that he loved to see me go bonkers whenever he brought home new playthings after work. With that said, there was this one toy that I never got tired of. It was a 118 scale 1970 Lamborghini Countach LP400 diecast. That car always stayed on my bed or desk regardless of the new toy that might bring home on any given day. But you know, as much as I loved it, I guess I did get tired of it a little since I began to make some modifications to it at around the age of 10. I superglued a roof light from a toy truck, added white stripes to the doors, signed my initials on the roof, and finally I superglued an airplane wing to the chassis. Then after some time, I grew up and the Lamborghini was boxed up then moved to the storage closet and my parents. By the time I went to college, I had completely forgotten about it. Now fast forward many years and I was 28 years old, all grown up, working a job and all. It was on a Saturday afternoon, I was walking back home after having lunch with a friend. At about a couple of blocks away from home, I saw a kid playing with a toy car that looked mighty familiar. It was a 1970 Lamborghini Countach LP400. But not just any Lamborghini. It had the same modifications that I had made to my toy car. It had the wings, stripes, the roof lights, and oh my god, it had my initials. I stopped and told the kid, Hey, nice car you got there. Did your dad buy it for you? And the kid answered, 
No, this was his when he was a kid. It was his favorite, so he gave it to me. I said to him that it was great and left the premises feeling mighty weird. I went home, called mom, and asked her if she had sold any of my toys. She told me that she would have if not for dad. He told her that he would pass them down to my kids and that she should never sell them. I told her okay and hung up, but I knew she couldn't be telling the truth. I mean, think about it. The car had my initials. How much sure does it get? So you know, I went to my parents the next day to check the boxes in the closet myself. I could not believe my eyes. My Lamborghini was in the box intact and in its exact gloriously modified state. Wanna know something else? I bumped into the owner of the house where the kid was playing with the toy car. He told me that he has no kid and that he never had a kid over at his place. He hates children. I've been wondering since that day if somehow I had seen my son, my own son of the future on that day. How else do I explain the Lamborghini on that afternoon, the kid and my own Lamborghini that's still in the box? I believe there was a glitch of some sort in my reality because otherwise I'd have to be insane and I'm not, I know I'm not. I'm a 57-year-old retiree and I live in a quiet suburb with my wife and our dog Buddy. Our kids have long ago moved out and they are building their own dreams now. So every day around here is peaceful and quiet, sometimes a little too much. I say too much because I've developed a habit of afternoon naps. I didn't do this before and it's not only because I used to work full time. Even on weekends, I rarely took naps because we're always busy doing things as a family. Or at the very least, the kids were extremely loud. Naps were impossible to be had. But on the day in question, my wife was in the kitchen doing something right before I fell asleep. So then it's funny that my dream on that afternoon was the continuation of the real life being played out inside of my head. In my dream, I saw Brenda, my wife, baking something called French silk pie. It's funny because I've never heard of such pie. Hence, either my brain was making up a name, or I must have heard that name somewhere and my subconscious had always remembered that. Another funny thing that I saw in my dream was our dog messing up the kitchen. It had gotten hold of the flower bag and that tossed it around the kitchen floor. He's a good dog for the most part, but just goes crazy when he sees powdery things such as snow, dirt, and flour, of course. I don't know why, but it's just what he does. I woke up an hour later and went to the kitchen after a quick shower. There I found something strange and funny. The kitchen was a bit messy. I could see Brenda had cleaned up a little, but a few places around the kitchen were still covered in flour. I laughed out loud and said to Brenda, this is so crazy and funny. I just dreamt about you making a mess in the kitchen. Well, technically not you since it was Buddy who had made the mess, but mess nonetheless and look at this. Brenda had this surprised look on her face that looked to have been paused in the moment. She began moving again after a few seconds, thank God, and said, How? That's crazy. You don't get it, do you? It was really Buddy who did this. I laughed again and said, yeah, yeah, excuses, excuses. I bet next you'll tell me that you're making this exotic pie called French silk pie. The next face Brenda made was that oh face you make when you're really surprised. She paused even longer this time then said, I didn't tell you that I was making French silk pie. I know I didn't because it was supposed to be a surprise. Tell me, what did Buddy do when he came into the kitchen in your dream? I want you to tell me everything. Things were getting really weird for me too at this moment. I couldn't see my face for obvious reasons, but I'm sure I was making an even weirder face than Brenda as I said, well, I saw Buddy slide into the kitchen. He almost slipped because he was running all the way from the family room. As soon as he came into the kitchen, he saw the flower bag on top of the counter. He jumped to grab it, got the bag, then began going nuts with it. That's what I saw in my dream. 
Oh, no, no, don't. Do not tell me that's what really happened. As it turned out, that was exactly what had happened. So somehow, I had fallen asleep and saw everything that was happening in the kitchen in my dream. I don't know if I should call this an out-of-body experience or a glitch in the matrix event. I don't believe it was an out-of-body experience seeing as how I didn't see myself sleeping. It felt more like I was invisible since my wife wasn't aware of me watching her. Whatever the case may be, everything that I saw in my dream was actually happening in real life. And I have no way of making sense of that. 